Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders is meeting with President Obama at the White House right now. This as we're learning that he hopes to take a page out of Mr. Obama's 2008 playbook and focus on caucus states in hopes of winning the nomination. Caucuses tend to reward campaigns with dedicated partisans, which could work in Sanders' favor. Meantime, a brand new Quinnipiac poll shows the Vermont senator pulling ahead of Hillary Clinton in Iowa 49 to 45 percent. Pete Hagseth, what do you think of Bernie Sanders' rise in the polls? I want to you know, you you me. Uh, I think I would like to be in that meeting. It would be interesting how much socialist talk is passing back between between the, those two fellow travelers. Maybe President Obama is going to you know remiss about the time he was in that same position against the same candidate and ultimately mm. went to the White House. I mean, I don't know. I don't. I personally don't think that there's a very good relationship between the Obama camp and the Clinton camp. I bet there's a little bit of a wink and a hey, we're going to see a good old socialist today. We'll see how things go in Iowa. Mm -hmm. uh, I just I, I there's some scheming behind the scenes. <laughs> All right. Well, this as Rachel, we know that the president still remains neutral in the Democratic primary race, but he does continue to speak very fondly of Hillary Clinton in an interview with Politico in Politico over the weekend. He uh, handed a lot of praise to Hillary, saying uh, she's more experienced than any non-vice president has ever been who aspires to this office. What do you think the conversation is going to be in there? Uh, well, I, what, what, do so, what do two socialists do when they get together? They don't have beer. What do they have, like vodka? I don't know what socialists well, do. I think other people to buy them beer. Other, yeah, other people <laughs> buy them beer, yes. <laughs> At the White House, that's exactly what happens. <laughs> <laughs> we paid for it. We paid for it. Um, I think that uh, his heart is with Bernie. I think they're soul brothers. Um, they are definitely both cut from the same cloth. But I think he knows that in a general election, Bernie Sanders is not does not have a chance and so he's got to back Hillary and frankly in the last couple of weeks Hillary's been really hugging him tight so um, you know she's probably the one to continue his legacy. Oh to put a glass up to that door. <laughs> Andrea, what do you think? I'm just wondering what does socialist talk sound like? Is it like oh I love a 99 percent tax rate? <laughs> me too. Give me some I'll free beer. Tax beer but I don't know but there's no question this has got to really annoy the Clinton camp because it does legitimize Bernie in a way that the Clinton camp doesn't want. I mean, the report over the weekend was, according to the New York Times, that the administration was working with Hillary's campaign on issues big and small. Big being, I think, probably the emails. Who knows? Small being a number of different things. But Rachel's right. I mean, she's going to preserve his legacy better than Bernie. But this does elevate elevate Bernie. And it does tweak Hillary a little bit, keeps her in line. And it pushes Bernie, her to the left. It pushes her that, to the left. that Obama and, and Sanders have uh, in common at this point, if you look back, is the, the kind of the, the fierceness that both have with the younger set mm -hmm. and with those young voters coming out. You mentioned, though, I want to hit on how he likes caucuses. Yes. So our mm -hmm. former home states, mm -hmm. right, of Minnesota, mm -hmm. Um, caucus State, caucus State. Colorado, yep. a caucus state. He was just in Minnesota, picked up 20,000 people at two events in the state of Minnesota. So a good strategy lots of, for lots him? of socialists well, in it, Minnesota. You know, I think it could <laughs> indicate it could that he's got a longer term game. And so if the president is planning to help Hillary Clinton out at some point, he doesn't want to tick off all those people who love Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. So he has to bring him to the White House and treat him equally as he has yeah. done with That's Hillary a really Clinton. Good point. That's a good Maybe point. he's the socialist bridge to Hillary Clinton. <laughs> well, you know what I mean? but, but it has to appear at least somewhat equal if he's going to lean in one direction mm -hmm. or the other. And Bernie Sanders right now is really popular in those caucus states like Minnesota, obviously, because people are coming out. Bernie Sanders right now meeting with the president yeah. Yeah. in the White House. Socialist. Did he brush his hair, you think? <laughs> yes, I no like way. He's no, way. <laughs> no way. Right? So don't brush his hair, I guess. I guess. All right, a new gun law in Massachusetts has Second Amendment supporters. Well, they're seeing red. The city of Lowell enacting a measure saying those applying for permits to carry handguns have to submit what critics are calling an essay. They also have to take a set of training classes that could cost up to 1100 bucks. The law is a brainchild of police chief William Taylor, and he's calling on applicants to write out why they believe they're entitled to receive an unrestricted gun license. Chief Taylor would then have sole discretion over approving or denying all applicants. He doesn't think that the law infringes on gun owners' rights. I hate us. We wanted to make sure that we allowed people to exercise their constitutional right to carry a firearm, but we did it in a balanced, reasonable approach. I wouldn't say, I don't think there's anything in these uh, new policy that can't be accomplished. Now, some gun owners and local gun shop owners support the new law.
any policeman that's doing the gun license. If they feel by doing an essay they're going to get to know a person better, then all for it. But as you can imagine, a lot of folks are furious. One attorney involved in an existing lawsuit over the state's gun laws saying, quote, the Second Amendment secures the right to keep and bear arms. You really shouldn't be required to write an essay explaining why you would like to exercise this fundamental right. And one of the town's residents saying simply, I will never write an essay to get my rights as an American citizen. <laughs> Okay, Sandra, what do you think about this uh, this writing assignment to get your Second Amendment right? I think that I interrupted you before rolling to the I heard you say yet. I hate. What did I you hate? I hate essays, right? Because <laughs> they're, they're subjective. So right. it is now going to be the sole discretion of the police superintendent to decide, once he reads that essay and you go through all the other rigmarole, to whether or not you get to exercise your constitutional right. I I go back to my school days. This doesn't it doesn't work. Well, and there, people are going to write essays that the teacher wants to hear. It's like in class, right? You write the paper sometimes. You know the teacher wants to hear, and then you get an A, and you walk out happily. Is anyone going to write? I'm going to use this gun for nefarious reasons. It's, <laughs> everything done ridiculously is always done under a balanced and reasonable approach. This is absurd. I would just write one word: Give me a gun. I'm an American. I, well, I was a, a, I was a TA in college. I had to grade essays. I can tell you, it is very subjective. But yeah. I think more troublesome is this one. Thing thousand one hundred dollar fee to take mm. this class because think about it if you're rich you can afford that you probably live in a gated community anyway I think this is a war on poor people because they're the ones who live in the communities that have to protect themselves yeah. they're the ones in the dangerous communities and we just saw I think it was in South Carolina a barbershop you know a, a, an african-american barbershop defending themselves yeah. against people I mean this is a war on poor people so that's a very interesting point that you're making I, the fee really stood out to me uh, as well because you're gonna know every Everybody in your community who can afford that. So yeah. it really, it, it can lead to the type of thing where you yes. don't even step up to try to get a gun. It's, it's almost like a mm -hmm. controlling mechanism with the money. But I, you know, in terms of the essay, you're right. You could make it a one a one sentence essay. I don't know how any different this is from a background check with comment, right? Because aren't they? Uh, I mean, doesn't the law allow you to the law allow you to rather to look at your background check and then if you have any questions, you can check in with some of the people mentioned sure, but in that I, background. Sure, I think that's a fair point. But you're getting into the realm of ideology and perspective when you talk about an essay. It's almost it begs a why that's question. True. We shouldn't be asking anybody why if they don't have a criminal yeah. background and they're right. not you know. Well, I mean, straightforward. You said it. This is a fundamental right, Second Amendment right of Americans. One, they shouldn't have to write an essay on why they deserve that gun. Two, they shouldn't be shaken down for money. Yeah. Yeah. To do yeah, it. I don't even we'll get to the essay point because of the you money. You bring up the people. greatest point, Pete. No criminal is going to write to kill somebody. <laughs> Please <laughs> give me this gun. It's not going to solve the problem yeah. that they want. It's just going to shake down taxpayers on a right that they already have. God, someone should just write because it's my right mm -hmm. and yeah. not pay. That's because I could afford to pay the fee. And by the way, based on a story sad. we're doing later really in the sad. show, if a millennial writes the essay, you probably won't even be able to read it because they're going to spell it. Yeah, their spell check. There'll be a cottage industry to you know grade to like edit all these gun. Well, I might start a business. I will yeah. write your gun essay for you. Yeah. For a small fee. Even if it's really good. good. You Ever think they'd approve one of my applications, <laughs> not, Pete? No, I don't think no. so. Ever since the national conversation kicked off in earnest with the president stepping in with his gun control and so on and so forth, they have sold more guns. Yeah. And there's been an uptick of gun sales. This sounds like, and, and we don't know, but it sounds like a pushback maybe against that. So... Well, well, and you wonder, all these essays being submitted, they're not just collecting the money, they're collecting the ideology of the gun owners right, submitting that's what and keeping said. it on file, yeah, which absolutely. is pretty scary. All right, a kissing booth, darts, raffle prizes, sounds like a carnival, right? Well, one u university, it's how students are supposedly learning about sexual consent. Yeah, a kissing booth. <laughs> we'll try to figure out what that's about up next. <laughs> <laughs>